Yes, gentlemen, greetings. Welcome to assignment number two, introduction to isometric drawing. Now what we're going to do basically is do some isometric projection. We're going to start with some simple ones and move to some more difficult ones. All right, now this is what we did last time, it was bad and title block. Now we're at isometric drawing. Now you're going to get the drawing, find the drawing on your Google uh, Classroom with the assignment you download it. Wherever you have it, just copy it from there. Copy and paste it in AutoCAD. You can Control C is copy, Control V is paste. So I'm pressing Control V now to paste it there. So I'll paste that drawing in that space. It's kind of big, so I will drag it down a little bit more so it will be sizable so I can draw it. Right, and the measurements given there is what I will use to reproduce this isometric drawing. Now I can draw this by turning on my isodraw option. And we're going to try to do this in less than 10 minutes and then ensure that ortho is on with ISO draft. We're going to move forward. By now, you should have, have gained a little understanding of how to do uh, isometric circles uh, because I've posted that up to your classroom already. So now we're going to actually do our first isometric drawing and we begin. I'm going to start with assessing the measurements. So the length is 100. The width is 15 and 15 that's 30. So we draw a rectangle that is 100 by 30 by 50 and 10, that is 60 high. So here we go. So that's 30 that way. Um, 60 high. 30. 60. And notice it's not allowing me to go in this lengthwise direction. So I'd have to press F5 function F5 to switch the angle or the plane, isometric plane. You can use this here to, to change to left up right. However, F5 is the shortcut. So escape to get back out here, line, and we start again. So it's 100, enter. Uh, 100, enter. Then we go up 60, enter. Come back here. Mm -hmm. From here, uh, allow me to go backwards, so I'll change F5, 30, enter, enter right there. So I have the general shape, the general rectangular shape now for this circle here. So the next one is 10 down from the top, so I will just measure 10 down from that point. Ensure that object snap is on so you can see where you meet your corners. So 10, enter. Around direction 10 F5 right so 10 this way from here F5 so you have to keep changing the planes while you're doing a drawing and then you find center of this here so the center of the shape for the circles will be right there and right there so this is the center point so what we do now is find circle circle is radius 50 so basically the entire height of this is 60 and the radius of the circle is 50 so therefore it will be 5 here and five below on the side that you are not able to see. So basically, we just draw an isometric circle using ellipse axis end, clicking on iso circle, and then find the center point, then type the radius, which is 50. Enter. No, let's type the, that was the diameter is 50, not the radius, sorry. So use that one and do it again. Boom, ellipse axis end. Ellipse, axis end, iso circle, and find the center, then type 25, which is the radius, and there, good. Now I want this to project out 20 millimeters. So what I do is use the center point. When you're drawing anything using circles, use center points rather than length by width. So coming out this way, a function F5, to come out by 20, enter. That's where it will stop. So I just copy this circle now from here, from this center point and paste it here. 
So copy from this center point, paste it 20 out. That's it. Then I'll connect them by using the quadrant, the quadrant feature and object snap and object snap right. So quadrants are here. So you use quadrant to connect circles, isometric circles at least. So I come here and connect from this quadrant to that quadrant. And from this quadrant to that quadrant. Then I can trim this. Get rid of all the center lines. Mm -hmm. All right, looking like we're getting somewhere. Good. Delete this one. All right, so looking like we're getting somewhere, getting somewhere. So this center is center here for 15 in the center. The diameter is 20, the height is 5. And it's 15 and 15, so we find the center point, which is 15 from here, 15 there, and then 15 from here, 15, enter, to find the other center, 15, 15, and 5, enter. Good, so that's the center right here. So isocircle, axis end, isocircle. Boom. And the radius is 20, so the diameter is 10. Enter. And we do the same thing for the center point. Bring it up at approximately function at 5. Bring it up to 5 millimeters, 5. Enter. And that's it. We'll copy this one and pull it up from this center to it here. Then connect the quadrants. Quadrant here to quadrant there. Quadrant there, the quadrant there, and then trim it. And I can delete the center lines now. Good. And now for this box over here, we see that it's five, the button. And 15 just the same, so 15 and it's 5 high and 15 from the end of here to the end of here. So we come 15, 15, enter. Oh, need to change the angle, mm -hmm. change the axis and the plane of drawing plane. 5, so 15, enter, come all the way. Up. F5 again, 15, that's it. Then find the center point, 15. Good. And so we know that this is basically 15 from here. Um, and we can, and the fifth five high. So we can assume that this is 10, which is five here, five here. And so five on the other side. So our three 15s give you that amount of measurement. So 15, 5 this way. So as you this is 10, 10, 10, 10, right? 15 in the center, so center to center. And we have 5 here and 5 here, so we assume that it's 10. So basically, what we'll do is offset 5 all around the center lines. So offset 5. Enter, boom, 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 boom. We form the first box. Then we draw this one. We trim it out. Dr. Enter. All right, now we copy this one here. Copy and pull it all the way up F5 to five millimeters enter. Then we connect them. Deleting 
extras. Mm. Let's take that. that. So now what we want is this piece here. And as you can see, this piece has a 45 degree angle here in reference to this straight line there. Good? So it says that this is 35 on this side, 10 up and 30 out. So we'll measure that. So from here to here, we have 35, enter, and we'll go up by 10, enter, then we'll go across by 30, enter, then we'll go back down by 10, boom. So this is the back edge of here, right? So we draw the lines coming forward now, F5, coming forward a bit, good. Coming forward, good. And that is the line, and then this one coming forward, good. All right, from here now we need 45 degrees. So this is already 30 degrees. So 30 plus 45, that would give us. Um, so being that we're drawing isometric, so this line is already on a 30 degree angle, in reference to a flat line, right? So what we need now is to add this 30 degree to the 45 that we need here which is this 45, because this line is already on 30 degree angle, plus this 45 gives us 30 plus 45 equals 75, so we need 75 degrees. So we ensure that I get, can get 75 degrees by turning this off and draw a straight line. So if you measure this angle here, turning on the polar tracking, you will see that this is 30 degrees, right? Right there. Now if you come all the way up plus 45, you get 75, right? So to get 75 degrees right there would be our 45. So between between this 30 and this 75 would be 45. And that's how we do it. Right? Then we copy from here. Then we draw this one here. 30 degrees. And we this one from here, copy from this point to this point. And that's it. And now we do, we can trim it up. Let me get it done. Three. And that's your camera for you. So most people would have gotten this part wrong because they're making it 45 degrees that way, but it should be 45 degrees in relation to this line. So this is your camera. Boom. Boom. This is the front, the arrow points to the front. Boom. So you'd plot this now by putting this copy into here. To your ball. But now it's kind of small, so what you could do is change it to the from construction line to outline, object line, boom. That way you have a little bit of thickness to it. You see? Have a little character. Then after you change the thickness, what you can do next is label it. So here you copy this, copy, and change the title to camera. Isometric camera. Camera. So what you can do now is scale it. SC enter. 
make a big R for reference, R click reference here, and click two points. Scale can work. Good. What you can do is scale both of them together. Let's see, enter, R, enter. And you scale it so that it fits better on the page. Now, you usually don't scale your drawing, you scale your sheet, but for this sake, because there's no measurement on it, you can scale it. But if there's measurement on it, if you had measurements on it, for example, like these, you could not scale it because the measurement would get bigger and you want the measurement to be accurate. So we scale this one and we plot it now and send it to our teacher. Try to PDF, a tree, that one, send the plot, display, window. So we go here, make sure it's monochrome CTB, monochrome CTB, preview. You notice the bottom of the bar is cut off, so we need to draw it in. Window again, draw it exactly over the bar. And preview. It is okay. So that's it. So we can submit our camera. Okay. We call it 